Hello, I'm Willa. I'm on the interpretation team here. And today I'll be telling you a bit about the Asian art collection here at Philoli. Just as it was during the time that the families lived here, the house is predominantly filled with 17th and 18th century English and Irish furniture and art. However, the collection does span more than six centuries and more than a dozen countries, including a lot of Chinese pieces. Both of the families who lived here over the years, the Bournes, who lived here from 1917 to 1936, and the Roth family, who lived here from 1937 to 1975, they both traveled extensively. The Bournes actually did eight grand tours of the world, <laughs> and the Roths traveled extensively in the Pacific when they were trying to expand the tourism offerings for maps and navigation company. And on those travels, they brought back the objects uh, to fill their home in Philoli. So the Asian art in display in the house today spans the years from 1400s to the 1900s. Um, the bulk of it is Chinese, dating from the Qing Dynasty, which ran from 1644 to 1912. But some of the other pieces in our collection do come from Japan, Thailand, and elsewhere. For example, this jar over here is actually a Chinese replica of a Thai storage jar. It likely dates from the late 19th century, early 20th century, and was produced near Shanghai. And I really love it because it has this lovely garden scene. Um, it features all sorts of animals like crabs and rabbits and dragons. Also a tea house, which makes it perfect for Philoli's garden. Next, I'm gonna head inside and show you some of the pieces we have inside the house. Our first stop is at this Coromandel screen made in China around the year 1800. These screens were produced for domestic use and for export. This exceptionally large screen features a continuous image that runs through all 12 panels. The panels separate at the hinges so they can be taken apart to fit in smaller spaces, like an apartment, or broken up and transported more easily. The image is of intricate, detailed figures of boys playing in a palace garden. The outer edges are decorated with various floral sprays. One of my favorite vignettes is the two little boys playing and splashing each other in the water. This subject is called 100 Boys or 100 Sons, a common motif in Chinese art from the time. It is associated with marriage, childbirth, and the wish for a prosperous family of sons in an agricultural society. Making a Coro Mandel screen requires a specific technique. A wood base is covered with layers of soft clay, multiple coats of dark lacquer are applied, and finally the design is carved and painted. Often, the reverse side is more simply decorated, usually with just a painted design. However, this screen is deeply carved and painted on both sides. The reverse side of the screen shows landscape scenes and the fine arts of China. Our next stop is one of my favorites. These beautiful zodiac figures from the Qing Dynasty in China during the 1700s. The 12 figures on display represent the Chinese zodiac. The glazed ceramic sculptures are in the Shiwan style, known for its rich, colorful glazes and detailed, realistic features. Each animal-headed figure represents a different lunar year in cyclic order. Currently, we are in the year of the rat, and on February 12th, we will move into the year of the ox. I was born in the year of the monkey. Can you find your own Chinese zodiac figure? Below the zodiac figures are these beautiful Chinese export serving bowls. For more than 40 years, Philoli kitchens were skillfully managed by Chef Qi Lo. He gave bowls similar to these to Lurleen Roth as gifts for Lunar New Year. Farther down the hallway, you'll find this bust, a Chinese ivory carving of Guanyin, the Bodhisattva of compassion in Buddhist teachings. Bodhisattva are people who are on their pathway to enlightenment, but sacrifice their journey to nirvana to stay on earth and guide others. This bust dates to the 19th century and is carved from elephant ivory with a wooden base. On the table next to it are these gilded wooden lotus flowers, which Lurleen Roth would display in the ballroom on the piano. We don't know what their origin is, but the lotus is a popular motif in Asian art. We also see lotus imagery on this blue and white jar in the library. At some point converted into an electric lamp, it is the oldest piece on display in the house. It was made in the region now known as Vietnam and dates to possibly 1400 or the 1500s. The top and base are of carved bronze with an acanthus leaf design. The main body is decorated with inset panels of alternating images, a bird sitting on a tree, a lotus flower surrounded by leaves, and a wave design with a cloud motif. This lamp was originally owned by the Bournes and purchased by the Roths. It was kept in this location during both the Bourne and Roth eras. We are lucky that this piece wasn't drilled to become a lamp like many were. 
Instead, a fitting was made that went in through the top. At some point it was broken, possibly when our families owned it, and a massive restoration happened. The library is also home to these two bright turquoise jars. These are Chinese Fuhua style jars, created during the Ming period, which spanned the 1300s to the 1600s. Fuhua style, literally translated as regulated decoration, uses raised lines of clay called slip lines to separate the different glaze colors from bleeding together. The effect is similar to that created with the cloisonne technique in metalwork. The jar's imagery includes floral designs, clouds, and images of the Buddha. This was a Roth purchase. Lurleen Roth especially loved them. Photos show these jars on display at the Roth House in Hawaii, as well as here at Philoli. Like the zodiac figures we saw earlier, these two ceramic statues are also from the Shiwan kilns in southern China, made in the mid to late 1800s. These statues were meant as decoration, likely installed in an elaborate architectural frieze on the roofline of a temple or official government building. On each side of the stylized clouds are holes meant for a rod to go through. Research suggests that the figures represent Hu Yi, the archer or sun god, holding the disk of the sun, and Chang E, the moon goddess, holding the disk of the crescent moon, from Chinese mythology. The body posture and facial expressions of both, executed in a realistic manner, were taken from actors performing the popular Cantonese opera, while the elaborate jewelry and colorful garments were inspired by stage costumes. The story of these two mythological characters is told during the Chinese Mid-Autumn Festival. Long ago, people on Earth were suffering because there were 10 suns in the sky, causing extreme heat and scorching the agricultural fields. Fed up, Hu Yi, an archer, shot down nine of the suns, leaving just one left. In gratitude, a goddess rewarded him with the elixir of immortality, but Hu Yi was conflicted about drinking it, since his wife Chang E would not be able to live forever with him. He hid it under the bed, but Chang E discovered it and drank it herself, ascending into the sky and taking up residence in the moon. Hu Yi was initially angry, but as time passed, he missed his wife and started leaving out her favorite desserts and fruit as sacrifices. Because it is a folktale, there are many versions of this story. Chang E is celebrated every year at the Mid-Autumn Festival when people leave out pastries on an altar so she may bless them. Thank you so much for coming along on our tour of the Asian art pieces at Philoli. Don't miss our winter bonsai exhibit. It's actually the first time that we'll have the full collection out on display, including this one that's right next to me here. So thanks again, and we'll see you soon.